What's up you guys? I know it's been a while since the last video but the 428 is finally running and it sounds amazing. I cannot wait to show you guys how well this thing runs. I did have a couple problems but we'll talk about those uh, later in the video but for now let me show you guys how well this thing runs. Alright here we go. Hit the switch. It's on. You see the MSD box lights up five times. And all we're gonna do is press the button.
cow. <laughs> Yeah, this thing sounds awesome. The hot oil pressure, it gets up to about 15, uh, 2015 is where it stays at when it gets fully, fully hot. Um, and I think that's just because of the, the bearings. We're at 0 .003, so they're a little wider than, uh, than stock, of course. But man, this thing sounds amazing. We still, gotta, we still gotta time it and whatnot. So, yeah. But for right now, it sounds mm -hmm. like, you know, just for firing it up, it actually sounds really good. Yeah, the, I think we established the timing at like 19 was the best um, for this. The carburetor, I bought it used, so I'm not sure if maybe we, ha we have to rebuild it, maybe. It's so the first time we run it, too, so. Yeah, I can't believe it ran. Um, this guy had. <laughs> it came right out of the used box. So. Yeah, so. But this thing is, man, this thing is running awesome. It sounds really good. And it's no noise that I'm worried about. Like the first time when we fired it up, <laughs> it was hitting that uh, windage tray. But let's talk about a little bit about the problems that I came with this engine that I had. So I know it's been a long time since this video. Man, I've been, <laughs> trust me, I've been waiting to put this video out for you guys. But finally it's here. So... Let's talk about a little bit about the problems that I had. So maybe this will help you guys out if you're building your engine as well. All right, you guys, we finally did it. The 428 is running. It is idling. And man, this thing sounds amazing. I am just super ecstatic on how this thing runs and how it sounds. I just cannot believe that I am finally done with this engine build. And this has taken me two years to complete since I first bought this 428 and I took it to the machine shop, which took about six months to get back. And when I finally got it back, that's when Kobe it happened and all of the parts shortages so as you can imagine this engine has been through it all but I definitely learned a lot I just want to give a big thanks to you guys who have been following me along this journey um, never in a million years would I thought that I would ever build an engine um, you know my family has no automotive experience I definitely do not have any experience building engines but I just took my time I watched a lot of videos I read the books and I asked a lot of questions and it is just insane to me that I am here on YouTube showing you guys my first ever engine build and it is a 428 FE <laughs> I definitely picked a good one to start with but I did have a couple of problems like I said uh, it wasn't just a push of a button and this thing was ready to go um, but let's get into it and hopefully this will uh, you know give you guys some tips if you are finishing up your build but man this thing sounded amazing the camshaft is perfect I love the idle and I just cannot wait to put this in the galaxy it's gonna be so awesome so the first problem that I had was when I first started the engine when I first pressed this button this engine came to life and it just roared. I was just, <laughs> I was at the top of the mountain, but I quickly uh, got concerned because I started to hear like a rhythmic tapping noise. Um, man, I just started to think the worst. I thought it was maybe like a rod knock or I thought maybe one of the bearings messed up or, or you know, the, the piston was banging around in the cylinder wall. I was just thinking the worst. Uh, but I quickly found out what the problem was. When I was going to this side, I wasn't really hearing anything. It wasn't until I went around to the other side is when I started to hear all the noise and the tapping. And I, we're hearing it on the bottom of the oil pan there. I 
remember reading when I bought the windows tray that sometimes it can hit the rod bolts. So I thought I'm just going to take off the oil pan. I'm going to, you know, spend the money on the two gaskets and just take it off to make sure that, you know, maybe it's the windows tray hitting. And sure enough, when I took off the oil pan and I looked at the windows tray, the rod bolts were hitting on the slits there. Um, so what I did is I hammered down the slits all the way to close them and then I just grabbed a grinder and I cut another slit and then I hammered them down again to make them completely flat and that gave me all the clearance I needed so I put back the witness tray and the oil pan on this run stand which is a little bit harder to do than on the rotating stand but I put it all back together and I started it up and man no more noise as you heard this thing sounds like a sewing machine it sounds really really good but then we had still had two other problems which we'll get to right next so the second problem that I had is when I put everything back together I put some fresh oil and I turned the engine on um, I hadn't ran it for a long time but I don't know why but I just decided to check the oil level and when I did this thing was like a chocolate milk like it mixed with the antifreeze man as soon as i saw that my heart dropped and it <laughs> I, i'm telling you guys there's a lot of highs and a lot of lows with this engine startup but you know i started to think like what what could it be you know why is this happening um i knew it wasn't the cylinder head a cylinder gasket because there was no smoke blowing out the tailpipe there and I looked at the inside of the radiator and there was no oil floating on top so I thought man this has to be something that is mixing um, you know maybe one of the ports and I remember reading that the intake gasket is very common for it to you know leak the coolant from these two ports right here so I remember that when I first uh, set down this intake I had tightened it down um, and I had pulled it off again because I thought that I didn't put enough silicone on the front here. So I had tightened already the, the intake gaskets. When I pulled off the intake, it sort of took the gasket with it. And I guess it must have, you know, like turned it or maybe like bent it a little bit. And I guess that's where the first mistake was. Is once you tighten down your intake gasket, I think it's maybe like a one-time use. Um, I know there might be some people that have, uh, you know, they've used it several times with no problems. But I guess is that one time that it doesn't see correctly and then your oil mixes with your coolant which is not good at all so I took a whole Sunday so to change all of the intake um, gaskets with the FE you have to take the whole top end which is pretty crazy so I want to give a huge thanks to Juan Angiano we spent a whole Sunday taking this whole thing apart cleaning up all the gasket surfaces and making sure that we put everything back correctly Man, it took the whole day, but we did it like we were professionals, man. It went back together super smooth, and that was it. That is what solved that problem. So be careful when you're setting down your intake. Um, these things are a little harder to seal up because there's a lot of ports you have to make sure that is sealed correctly. The third problem that I had is when I had assembled everything back together, we had cleaned the whole inside of the engine as much as we could. Well, it was ready to start it, but we were trying to find TDC, so we were bumping the starter to try to find TDC right here on the number one piston. The problem is that when I was hitting the starter, um, it suddenly just like it stopped. The engine seemed like it seized. I heard a loud noise, and man, again, my heart dropped. I was like on the edge. I was <laughs> I was pretty scared because I thought, man, something happened within the engine, and that is it. I have to take the whole thing apart. But um, I grabbed the socket and I turned the crank bowl, and it still turned pretty good. So uh, that's what really baffled me. So this took me like weeks and and days and weeks just trying to figure this out. The starter would not want to mesh with this flywheel. Every time it would come out, it would just crash with this and it would just chew up these teeth and it would make a loud noise. And man, I just could not figure this out. 
me and Juan spent a lot of time trying to figure this out and we never even got close. It wasn't until Robert Kogel came in and he figured it out. So it had, it was with this uh, mount right here, this thick mounting plate, it had moved. And you know, we, we did try to move it with Juan up and down, but I guess we just didn't move it uh, down enough. And man, he figured it out. And this thing is meshing really good as you heard. Man, big thanks to him. Uh, <laughs> it's just crazy because I met Juan through YouTube. You know, he watched the videos and he reached out and he's been coming out to help out with this engine. The same thing with Robert. Um, he has family that lives here in California. And when he comes to visit them, he comes over and he helps out as well. So this is just really, really cool that, you know, us car guys stick together and that we're able to figure this stuff out and work together, man, because this is what it's all about. You know, we spend your, your Sundays or your, your hours working on stuff like this until you figure it out. But big thanks to Robert for figuring that out. Finally got the started to mesh correctly. And as you saw... I pushed the button and this thing started up right away and that was it that's all she wrote the engine is running and it is sounding great so what is the plan with the 428 build well if you guys remembered I do have a tri power setup for this thing I have the intake that I cleaned up and I also have the three carburetors that I rebuilt and I really want to switch it all while it's on the run stand that way I can just turn on the engine and have them uh, tuned up and ready to go I am going to put an air fuel mixture gauge as someone had commented so we'll put that on right here and that will help me with tuning up these three carburetors um, I do have a lot of friends that want me to just lift this engine up as is and put it in the galaxy which I'm really tempted to do but man, you just cannot deny a tri-power setup in a 64 Galaxy. When you open up that hood and you see the three carburetors, man, that is just super cool. And that is what I really want. Uh, I will take a small break on working on this engine though. I'm going to take a breather because I've been through all the ups and downs. And what worries me the most is you know the cost of this this engine build because it's a pretty big chunk of change and these problems that i had it uh, <laughs> it really put me on the edge but i'm just glad that everything is figured out and that this thing is running but i think it'd be a cool video to do on the next um the next part of the series is just to do a you know price comparison you know how much does the ford fe really cost versus a small block ford per se but that'd be a pretty cool video to do so i guess we'll see on the next uh, video on that but that's gonna be it um i want to give a big thanks to you guys for following along following along the builds and messaging me it's finally done the engine is ready to go and that's it i'll see you guys on the next one boom Mission on.